on the World Wide Web I found this circuit. And they stated <coughs> that it was a robot sound generator. Uh, it was published here. When you go to worldradiohistory.com you can find this book and on page 62 you can find this circuit. This is the original schematic <coughs> made with a 555. Of course the 555 is used here now as a square wave oscillator on a certain frequency and <coughs> I found in the description that the robot sound could be generated when you say um, clip a transistor that has on a certain input uh, an audio signal and here on its output the same audio signal and when we send in to that uh, first transistor square waves with a certain amplitude <coughs> that makes that the transistor here acts as a kind of switch on say 10 uh, hertz 20 hertz, 100 hertz, uh, 10 kilohertz, etc., etc., and that had to make the robot sound. Of course, I have not completely made this circuit, so um, that has everything to do that I wanted to do a first experiment and wanted to say in a certain way, test the principle and that principle is here like I explained um, the transistor gets severe pulses here out of the square wave generator on a certain frequency it starts to conduct here and it chops in a certain way the audio frequency on another frequency given by the generator and that could be uh, 10 Hz, 20 Hz, etc. The original schematic, I've now used the BC-547B instead of the original BC-109C, I think it does not matter. Here is the circuit. Uh, like I made it now and uh, perhaps I'm going to do more experiments. One of the aims of my YouTube channel is to encourage experiments. So anyway, do these experiments uh, yourself when you are interested. Anyway, this is a first setup of how such a circuit can work. And I will show the first experimental results. Here again the transistor that has to chop the audio frequency. I have used by purpose here non-polar capacitors at the input and at the output to prevent a certain DC setup. The, uh, that DC setup is of course not very important when we uh, connect the signal uh, trace, sorry, the signal generator to the collector, but anyway, could be. And here is my generator, square wave generator. It's in practice this square, uh, square wave generator. The maximum voltage that it can give out is one volt. Could be, of course, could be that it is not enough. <coughs> to drive such a transistor to saturation. And I've tested that with an, an experimental first extra amplifier stage and that did not work good. Anyway, I think that this circuit uh, is interesting for everyone liking to do experiments and it is as it is. So let's listen. And uh, of course you can also consider such an experiment 
as a kind of amusement. No problems with that. Want to switch on the power supply now? I have already connected my oscilloscope. And here you see. This has everything to do with what you hear now with the chopping of the audio signal here into the uh, end amplifier. And it's done now on a very low frequency. It's multiplied by 10. It is now on, say, it's 1.7 uh, Uh, my, uh, amplified by 10, that's 17 hertz approximately. Let's listen what happens. I lift up now the, say, the chopper frequency of the uh, generator. And you, are, you surely hear the distortion. Uh, well, let's switch now to a higher frequency. Let's see what happens. This sounds really like a kind of, uh, <laughs> say, a kind of robot sound, like it was in the original schematic. But anyway, uh, the square wave generator is now changed to 11 multiplied by 100, so 1.1 kilohertz. Anyway. So let's go to higher frequencies in chopping, chopping the audio frequency. Uh, I will now go from say approximately one kilohertz up to ten kilohertz. Let's see what happens. Of course, on the highest frequencies, the chopping will be less visible and also will have a smaller effect. That's completely logical when we look at the radio theory, etc., etc. And that's what you hear now. There's now, uh, I'm chopping it now with, say, approximately 11 kilohertz. And that uh, has almost no effect on the sound. But let's go back to a lower frequency where the chopping of the signal has more effect. Anyway, let's listen. <laughs> I'm saying constantly changing now 
the chopping frequency <coughs> of my sine wave, sorry, square wave generator. It's set to the maximum uh, output level that it can give. It's one volt. So here is that generator. It gives out, gives out maximum one volt and it's sent to the transistor that does the chopping work. And these are all the effects. Here we have a completely pure uh, audio signal going from say approximately 200 Hertz up to say 12 kilohertz normal audio file uh, played over this capacitor and this resistor to that transistor that does uh, that chopping work. Uh, I think but only I think that with this schematic with the 555 generator you could <coughs> could not get better results. It's an old schematic of 1996 uh, anyway. Uh, it was a say kind of quick test whether such a circuit could work. And well it worked and that was very very interesting. And <laughs> a real in fact a real good circuit to chop the the audio band to get say a kind of typical distortion 